Kishan, uh, uh, remember, we have uh, heard the BJP's vice presidential or candidate being elected. Bade. Let's now uh, uh, cut to the live visuals of the nomination procedure Chalo, taking place of mein. the opposition. All right, uh, as we all know that Margaret Alva is uh, the opposition's uh, choice for the vice presidential candidate, whereas it was uh, Mr. Dhankar who had been appointed uh, as the vice presidential candidate for by the BJP. For more details, we also have uh, Pallavi Ghosh on the phone line. Uh, Pallavi, how do you uh, view now that uh, Margaret Alva has been uh, uh, thrown in as the nomination for the opposition as far as the vice presidential candidate is concerned. So, you know, she does know it's going to be a tough election. In fact, that's exactly what has been her media statement, that it's all about a tough uh, election. And uh, she also knows the numbers are stacked heavily in favor of Jagdeep Bankar. But it's also a question of political point, which she needs to be proved. Uh, well, why was she chosen? Well, she's first of all a minority. Uh, she's also been a governor of Rajasthan. And Jagdeep Bankar is also a jat leader from Rajasthan. Interestingly, of course, she also belongs to Karnataka. Karnataka elections also uh, is going to be taking place next year. Uh, so that could be one World Bank, possibly at least the Congress party is looking at, a uh, woman leader. So these are the factors which have been uh, put up. Uh, you know, elections are often fought on numbers, obviously, and I, I think the opposition is aware of the fact that they don't have the numbers with them. But I think this is also a story of the fact that, you know, the, the whole fragile, the how fragile nature of the opposition also becomes extremely explicit. And therefore, that is something which was put across very, very clearly. And, uh, uh, you know, it also goes on to show that many of those who belong to the opposition spectrum are the ones who have switched sides because it benefits them politically speaking. Right. Uh, you mentioned that, you know, uh, she's uh, a female candidate and the fact that she's being very brave about it. And she's even said that she's all uh, set to now uh, take, you know, uh, fight the battle with uh, the BJP or other NDA's uh, uh, VP candidate. And that is uh, West Bengal Governor Jagdeep Dhankar. How do you view this battle now? And what are the odds now stacked uh, like as far as Jagdeep Dhankar is concerned? In terms of numbers, is of course, no worry at all. Uh, but that, as far as the NDA goes, from the opposition spectrum, we already have, for example, the AIADMK, the YSR Congress, which has already pledged this support. So which just adds up the numbers in favor of Dhankar. How is it going to break out in the floor of the House? It's going to be very interesting because we all know the confrontation which has repeatedly taken place between the West Bengal government and the West Bengal governor. And the West Bengal government, of course, is the Trinamool Congress government. And we have the Trinamool Congress leaders sitting bang in opposite of uh, Jagdeep Dhankar. I think that that face-off is going to become inevitable at some point of time. But the challenge for Jagdeep Dhankar is also to ensure that, one, all the bills are passed very smoothly in Rajya Sabha. Right. Uh, he's been a lawyer. He's, uh, he's got that background. And also to ensure that there is a semblance of flow management and opposition parties, because of the sheer numbers, don't have their uh, sway as far as working on the Rajya Sabha is concerned. Right, Pallavi, thank you for bringing in those details and putting that story into perspective for us. And with that, let's now shift our attention over 